You're watching the Hoof JP, and in today's video, we're visiting this local beef farm. It's just a couple of short miles from my house, and we're probably in for a bit of a rodeo. Here's what's happening in this episode of the Hoof GP. I trim some seriously overgrown feet and teach my brother Bob a thing or two about hoof trimming. So, in the intro, you probably noticed the weirdo standing behind me. This is my brother, Bob. Say hi, Bob. So, Bob was down seeing Mummy and the rest of the family, and I invited him along to come hoof trimming with me. And this is quite weird. Nobody in my family has ever been hoof trimming with me, apart from every brother-in-law that I've seemed to gather up, including Craigie Boy. But Bob here is coming. So, I'm actually quite looking forward to it. Are you? Yeah, a It'll be different anyway, but he doesn't look much like... A member of the Hoof GP crew like that now, does he? Let's do something about that. That's better. Anyway, we are running slightly late, so we better crack on and get to the farm. It is seriously hot here in Scotland, so it's like 15 or 16 degrees. Which to us is hot. That's our summer. Leave us alone. Some fridges should sort the matter out though. No. Some fridges should sort the some <laughs> Some fridges should sort the dehydration out though. How cool is that? Oh, my, my big brother. This farm really is only a couple of miles from my house, so it'll only take us about five minutes to get there. Just about every farm that we work on is within 21 or 22 miles. What's wrong? Just as we're trying to look cool driving away nice and casually for the YouTube video, we've forgotten to shut the door. So Bob is away shutting it right now. It actually lets me be genuine. Here in Scotland, we don't like to be nice to people's faces too much because then, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. But I'm seriously glad that Bob's coming to work with me. It's quite like never having a brother or sister come to work. I don't know, they've never seen me work in real life, which today is a pleasure for me, it really is. Well, right, and just a flick of the switch, we'll be at the farm, just like that. And it's still sunny here because we're only a few miles away. Imagine that. Hey, these sexy girls waiting on us. We have 10 of these gorgeous black Aberdeen Angus crosses to turn. A cross is what we refer to as when they've been crossbred with a different breed of cow. You see, when pedigree cows and many animals become too pure, they can get slight issues, or maybe you want a cow that produces more milk, so they have a better calf, and crossbreeding cows is a good way to do that. And with all that said and done, it's time to get the green goddess pushed off the trailer and into position before we can set about the task of getting some of these long feet turned into the most beautiful versions of themselves. But I will never leave your side You're the reason to my pride Never wither and runs dry And your roses are my guides Goodbye, my friend, our love remains But not this way I'm in your garden As we've all just seen, our first customer here has some seriously overgrown back feet. But believe it or not, she is not in any pain whatsoever. She is not even slightly lame. Although, she will certainly be uncomfortable. And that uncomfortableness and this overgrowth will eventually lead to a point of lameness. So our job here is to return this outer claw to as near perfect as we can possibly get it and make sure that both of these claws are bearing the same amount of weight so that one doesn't become problematic because it's taking the brunt of the force. By now you'll have heard the calves and the cows mooing away in the background. That's because for this occasion, i.e. us hoof trimming them, the cows have been separated from their offspring, the calves, which are in the shed just behind us. And they're not very happy about it. But never fear, they will be reunited at the end of this video. This is a good example of the exact scenario I was just telling you about. Because this outer claw is so overgrown, it started to develop a white line problem. These happen when the white line is seriously insulted or receives too much weight bearing. 
These are obviously out in the field, aren't they? Yeah. That is me making sure with the farmer that these cows are indeed out on the open grass fields here. I need to understand where these cows are going to spend the next couple of weeks so that I can decide whether or not the best course of action would be to apply a block. In this case, the cows and calves are going back to their field, so no block will be required as she's walking on fantastic ground, which will help ensure that that white line problem doesn't progress. Cows' feet usually mirror each other to some extent, and the exact same is true of this cow's feet. If we look at both back feet, both outer claws were overgrown, and both outer claws have problems within zone 3, which is this area right here, of their outer claws, and the beginning of what would have been a white line problem. And looking at the results now, we can see a dramatic improvement was easily made. Now it's time for Bob to get his first cow in 20 years into a crush. I know it's just a video and it's just me hoof trimming, but this takes me all the way back to my childhood, working alongside my brother on a farm here in southwest Scotland. My two brothers and two sisters and I grew up on a beef and sheep farm. And all I knew for the first 14 or 15 years of my life were cows and sheep. And those are some of the happiest memories of my life. As is often the case with many of you probably listening right now, things took a turn for the worst and my whole life was turned upside down. So having moments like this with my brother back on a farm is truly special for me. As you can see, this cow also has some overgrowth on both of her back feet, but it's nothing a short spurt with the grinder and a quick few slices of the knife won't sort out. She had a particular little go lame on her back, left foot, and the far back. And rightly so, it does a good job by picking up that foot and they fix the problem. But she's not lame on her back right foot, so they don't bother picking it up. But the only reason she's not lame is, she is. She's got a problem, but she's not as sore, so she uses this more. So then they fix this foot, and immediately this one goes lame. So when there's a problem on any foot, you try to pick up at least the opposite foot, but usually you try to pick up all the water. But the folk are so busy, it makes sense. I can see why, why it was so tempting just to fix this old foot without checking. Make no mistake, I'm not saying it's okay to only trim a cow's foot if it's sore. What I am saying though, is that farmers are incredibly busy people, so I can understand why the temptation is there to only look at the foot that is so obviously sore. The weather here in Wigtonshire, southwest Scotland, where we live right now, is genuinely fantastic. We don't get very much sunshine, so we appreciate every sprinkling of it that we do receive. I said earlier on that these were Aberdeen Angus crossbred cows. Actually, I was slightly wrong. They're Limousin cattle, which have been crossbred with dairy cows. And this one, unfortunately, has probably got arthritis. I say that because she is walking very slowly. She looks like she's very stiff, and the farmer was particularly worried about her. We were hoping there was something wrong with her feet, because then at least there's something I can do about it. As it is, unfortunately, Old age catches up with us all, and this cow being 15 means she's highly susceptible to it. So I'm just taking a couple of minutes out just to kind of go over my reaction to a little bit of time spent with the Oof GP and uh, his Craigness. So how would you actually describe the, the kind of smells and the sights and sight of, the, of our farm, I suppose? Obviously the smell of manure is something that's there kind of all the time, that's something you never forget. If you grow up on a farm, you never quite get that smell out of your nostrils. Um, 
the kind of burning smell of a hoof as the grinders are actually going around it that's something that um don't necessarily expect because obviously there's, there's a bit of heat going through there but the cows it doesn't really bother them because they've got a bit of thickness and in, in those kind of hooves um it's like a military operation just the way those two run things and very quickly um the the kind of stuff you learn growing up on a farm comes back to you like don't stand here, stand a little bit further back, stand kind of maybe behind the cow's eye line so that they don't get freaked out when they see you other way. They're herding animals, so they have natural instincts that will, um, you know, obviously come into play. So I feel a little bit out of place, I'm not gonna lie. Also, I'm wondering if Craig's coffee skills are up to a flat white. Actually, the burning booth smell reminds me of that Johnny Cash song, Ghost Riders in the Sky. It is very strange to be back on a farm though. It never quite gets out of your bloodstream. It's kind of something that is ingrained after growing up in this area. Good to be back. And with that, Bob leads us on to what is the most overgrown and problematic hoof of today. All of this overburdening hoof horn has led to a problem lurking underneath, which currently is out of sight. But in a few short moments, we'll see exactly what is wrong with this cow's foot. If we compare the size of my hand next to the inner claw with the size of my hand next to the outer claw, you can truly see just how overgrown this foot is. At this stage, the hoof is really starting to look more normal, but a problem is beginning to appear in the outer claw. It's no great shock to me. This cow was bearing a huge amount of weight on the outer claw and hardly any on the inner, so it stands to perfect reason that that outer or far away claw as we look at it suffers from bruising and ultimately an ulcer is lurking underneath what we can see now. As you can all hear, although it is sunny, it is windy, and those cows are also still missing their calves. But don't worry, it won't be long until they're reunited. This ulcer is causing this cow pain. She is lame because of it. So we're preparing the inner claw to take a block, to take all of the pressure away from the sore area. So I was just saying to the farmer, that if a cow has one extremely long foot and not two long feet, i.e. one back foot's good and one back foot is bad, then it's more likely that she's lame and not just overgrown because she's trying to save that foot and save herself from pain. So that one is overgrown and the one on the other side is normally worn or sometimes they're actually overworn because they're using that foot more dominantly than the sore one. This is a sole ulcer. It's probably a secondary issue actually. This would be overgrown because of some other problem down here on her toe and then there's too much weight on this foot causing this issue. These problems are very easily fixed. With a little bit of time, some knowledge, and the will to do something about it, it's amazing how quickly a cow can go from having a problem like this to being fully healed. There are only 10 of these cows here for us to do, but even if there were 110, every single one would get the same level of attention. Everyone matters as much as the last. This cow has a problem here, and in here, and this is too old, so we need a block wall. If you take this out, that's on a magnet, so you just give it a good hard tug. Yep, and you need a big, you need a block, so we use a big block. They're rubber ones, big blocks. Little blocks, you need that. Put the block on here, just set it out there, so you get it. It's going, it doesn't go in the bad foot, it goes on the good foot. And it's gonna go that way up, see how they're handed. Yep. So you go to that way, so you don't want this side to get dirty, so we'll leave it there. You need to start with low torch, and go all up and down the foot. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. Yep, faster, faster, much faster. Squeeze harder, and more going, much fast. Good, fit it on. And you're gonna mix it around with the block on, so it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. All right, and now you hold it still, 
They put some hard pressure on it. So it's going to take around 15 to 20 seconds for the bonds inside the glue to actually form. And if it moves during that time, the bonds will break after two or three days. So you have to make sure it stays really still. So then what you do is, because we don't want we don't want this glue stuck in that cabinet, twist this, pull it off, pull the nozzle off, get one of these. Close the cupboard up. Nice work. There are only a few cows left to trim, which are all problem free and only require a little touch up to make sure that they stay that way. And once they're done, it'll be time for us to reunite the cows with their offspring, something which I'm pretty sure they'll all be happy about. Just like that, the youngsters are reunited with their mothers before heading back to the fields that they call home. I think the thing that strikes me at the end of the day is just the confidence required to do this job. To know how much is enough, but not too much in terms of how much horn you cut away, that kind of thing. I'd probably be down to the bone. But yeah, fair play. It's a hard shift. 